Good morning, and welcome to our pitch for our TV show, Coca cola We are group number nine, consistent of me, Alexis Economos, Andrew Flo, Zohair Hamidi, Kelly Murphy, and Tommy Watts. We hope you enjoy our pitch and decide to become a partner in this amazing opportunity. Coca-Cola is a manufacturing facility ran by Craig, the new general manager. Craig is a young, intelligent man who is solely concerned with finding the proper balance in implementing his strategic, corporate, social responsibility perspective as it pertains to operating his manufacturing facility. The Orlando City facility has a negative reputation with customers for rudeness and incorrect order placement, and the staff seem discontent with the way the plant is being operated. The board of directors at Coca-Cola hired Craig to lead the Orlando City facility and to change the current workplace culture to positively impact the way employees feel about their job and positively impact their customers' opinions on the product and service provided. It has long been suspected that the management of the plant is leading cause of all the issues, but Craig is determined to set things straight. Having met with some of the staff and done a little investigation, Craig has identified a key individual in management whom he needs to address. Craig is generally a no-nonsense type of guy, but upon learning this employee situation that he worked for Coca-Cola for 29 years and will be retiring in six months, Craig has compassion for him and hesitates letting him go right away. Vern is a stocky, somewhat irritable older man and is the team lead on the day shift at the Coca-Cola company. He used to work out when he was younger, so he is proud of his physique and walks around with his chest bowed out, even though he's not quite in shape like he used to be. Fern never had much formal education and learned everything he knows about how to manage a manufacturing team from the experience he earned working for Coca-Cola for 29 years. He thinks he knows a lot more about situations than what he really does. Fern is a stern leader but tends to do things and make his decisions based on impulse and on his initial gut reactions to circumstances, rather than on actual facts. He really has never had an interest in the opinions of others, and thinks that since his own opinions and methods have worked for this long, they couldn't possibly be wrong. On occasion, his behavior causes problems for those around him due to some of his unethical decisions and irresponsible actions, to the point of having human resources called on him. Even though Vern makes these mistakes and has these character flaws, he does have good intentions for his employees and a teachable spirit will grow inside of him before he retires. He currently believes that apologizing or admitting that he was wrong to a group is a sign of weakness and simply refuses to do so. Vern really wants the best for Coca-Cola and its employees and wants people to be content working for him, but doesn't know how to bring that to fruition without appearing weak. Due to some of the problems Vern has caused for Coca-Cola in the past, and due to the current workplace culture that has resulted from those mistakes, the general manager of the plant has assigned Vern a promising student assistant who is nearing completion of business school, who, when Vern retires, will be Vern's replacement. Tammy is a kind, humble, and bubbly younger woman with a good heart and strong values. She is in her final semester of business school and is extremely smart with a 4.0 GPA. There is one thing that Tammy lacks, however, and that is on-the-job experience. She has a lot to learn about how to manage the manufacturing business unit at Coca-Cola that books could never teach her. As Vern's new assistant and soon-to-be replacement, she is tasked with sharing the facts that she has learned in school, as well as advising him on how he should proceed as a kind of moral compass. Tammy also needs to learn how to lead the business unit and learn the processes at Coca-Cola so she can take the lead and be successful when Vern finally retires in six months. Tammy is very nervous and a bit intimidated with Vern. However, she reports directly to Craig. Craig has assured Tammy that if there are issues that arise between her and Vern, that he knows what to do about it. Craig would not go into detail with Tammy about Vern's performance or history with employees and customers. 
However, issues with Vern were implied in their conversation. Tammy assured Craig that she would do everything in her power to get along with Vern and really change the workplace culture here at Coca-Cola. Our target audience for this show is the college student trying to make it in their industry, such as Tammy. The majority of shows today are geared towards adults or children, and the ones that are targeted for college students are immature reality shows about drinking and partying. This show would be a look into the struggles of a newly college grad who is facing a problem most college graduates face. And that problem is older co-workers not believing they've earned their position just yet. And Tammy is on the way to make every college graduate know that they can do it. The show will open with Craig's first day on the job. Throughout this episode, Craig investigates the plant and speaks with employees, ultimately learning of Vern's issues. After learning of Vern's management strategies, Craig makes a plan to bring in Tammy. Before bringing Tammy in on her first day, Craig spoke with Vern behind closed doors and explained the situation. Craig expressed his unhappiness with the way Vern has managed in the past, but offered hiring Tammy as a solution rather than letting Vern go or forcing him into early retirement. Vern was not very happy to learn that his actions had caught the board of directors' attention and that Tammy would be babysitting him so he wouldn't make any more mistakes, but agreed to train Tammy the best way he could before he retired. Vern also agreed to do his best to treat Tammy and all of the other employees with respect from that day forward, and that he would really consider Tammy's advice for each decision before acting. Our second episode follows Vern and Tammy as Tammy works through her first few weeks. Tammy is learning quickly, and despite Vern's promise to train her the best he could, he is very apprehensive as he did not know initially that she had no manufacturing experience. When Vern hears of a program that Tammy has been working on, he is not happy at all. He feels as though she is trying to steal his job before he has time to retire. As Craig comes to notice Vern's true feelings and actions towards Tammy, he takes a new approach that leaves Vern stunned. The third episode has yet to be produced, but will follow Tammy continually catching on to the job very well. And her new program and process are taking effect extremely well for the company. While being extremely detail-oriented, she noticed that Vern seems to be the complete opposite. Vern has managed to become so comfortable with his job that he no longer is prideful of the reputation of the brand. Tammy, on the other hand, is full of new ideas, marketing measures, and even expansive demonstrations in order to continue building the company. The fourth episode in the series is designed as a mid-season cliffhanger episode. We decide to take the production outside of the plant. We see Craig throwing a 4th of July barbecue for the company at his home. In this episode, we will get to learn more about the family and life behind Vern, Tammy, and Craig. This allows the audience to relate to our characters on a personal level and not just a professional one. We will also see Tammy and Vern becoming closer as the stress of the plant is gone and they're able to just talk about their lives. Tammy is the same relative age of Vern's children, who happen to be at the party as well. Tammy will come to find out Vern's son is studying business at her college as well, just one year behind. A budding romance emerges as the episode ends, giving our story a love interest. Vern is unexpectedly excited about this relationship, and we will see in the second half of the series how this affects their daily work at the plant. To ensure we can achieve the production of this show, we've decided as a group 
that all members are responsible for voice acting as needed and storyboarding. Key individuals are solely responsible for the production and submission of the show on a weekly basis. We thank you for your time and hope you decide to become a partner in this fantastic show called Cloca Cola.